my name is Daniel Taylor and this is the life of an actor. Oh my god, it's dark in there. <laughs> I don't know where I'm taking it. My dad was always trying to put me off because um, <laughs> he said to me, he said, I think you should get a proper job. And I said, what's that? He went to, you'd be a very good salesman. I went, it's the same thing. <laughs> Again, stop there. I got involved with what was called the Cluage Youth Theatre. And this Cluage Youth Theatre was, um, it was phenomenal. It was literally, they were taking people like me who couldn't really, I think actually quite dyslexic really. We were doing a play called The Nativity in this room. And uh, I was given six lines. I thought, I'm gonna make this the best six lines there's ever been. And I just practiced those six lines every single day. I did it in every walk wherever I went. And I remember one day, um, just overheard, did anyone see Danny as that angel? Oh, that's it. If I can do six lines, I can maybe do 12. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play Tommy Cooper, but I'm not famous. Well, I just put it together myself. So I put it to a, a, a mate of mine called Ian Carroll, who's a, a playwright over in Liverpool, <laughs> over a few pints, and he went, Tommy Cooper, and I went, yes. He went, go on, do some Tommy Cooper, so I did. He said, have you seen a policeman around here? I said, no. He said, stick him up. <laughs> Two weeks later, he put a, a script through the door. It was a great sort of skeleton for us to sort of work from, and it's probably the most important bit of the, of the process, if you like, to get to this point. Moments I laid eyes on her. I knew she was a wolf. It's a three-hander. The story's told by his wife, who's affectionately known as Dove, his manager, Miff Ferry, who had a sort of very factitious relationship with. And of course, in between all these scenes where we follow his rise is the, the routines, the famous routines. Cheers, Scott. Second act. <laughs> is the essence of Tommy, the innocence, the bewilderment, the surprise. What? Because that's what he was like. That's what people loved. The, that's what people loved about him. And oh, I'll be long night. <laughs> very much a celebration of his journey from from nowhere to his television star. It's music for Joey's part. I heard about the uh, Tommy Cooper show gig via Facebook, and the the way it was described was: we're looking for uh, an actor to play the part of a dour Scottish uh, theatrical agent. Uh, and I thought, well, that's not me. So if I had to do this, it would have to be proper acting. You can be a real fool. It's like Dan, who had experience in Cluid Youth Theatre. Uh, I did too, but mine was uh, at its very dawn in the 1970s. It's, an, it's the line to do. Yeah. Fairness? Uh, yeah, that's right. Fairness? What do you know about fairness? Fairness? Don't talk to me about fairness. When I was about 14, 16 years old, I went off to do other things. So there was a 40-year gap. Anything I know about acting, I've either learnt from Danny and Sharon or Cluid Youth Theatre, which, which I think is quite different to the classic stage school sort of stage school's all prim and beautiful like this. And, you know, youth theatre's a bit, right, what do you want? You know, uh, and that's a bit more me. More and more now, people are creating their own work, and I, that's what we, you know, I've always wanted to do that. And obviously, being with Dan now, we, we've got the same picture in our heads of what we want, so it's brilliant. It's worked out really well. I just love being in theatres. I love the environment. I love the people that run them, how they're run, and it's really important that people realise that theatres belong to communities. This is where I got my grant from as well, and without that grant, I could not have gone to London to drama school. To bring this back twice is, I feel like I'm paying a bit of that grant back, you know? The huge amount of work that goes in, particularly from Danny and Sharon, who you know, drive the van, load the gear in, build the set. Here's some um, programmes for tonight. I drove here, this is the day before last. Brought all the set in on my own. And then went flying around, sort of flinching. You know, and I went flying until sort of nine yeah. o'clock at night. And That's 90% of the work. The show is this, you know, the hour and a half of absolute fun and pleasure that we get to have as a result of all that graft. We do everything as well, because it's everything is, you know, it's all in. It's the 
the props, the costumes, everything. You've got to be, you, you kind of compartmentalise, is that a word? Yeah, and we don't have a stage manager, it's, it's... But it's better like that. Well, I prefer it like that because we know where everything has to be. I try and make myself as useful to the production as they are, and they are the production. Tommy Cooper swimming. used to be, and he did all his props. He did Tommy all his Cooper, own props, so yeah. it's kind of staying true to that as well. From someone had seen me in this in Liverpool, and news had got back to this company in Australia. I said, you've got to meet this lad. He's a singer-songwriter as well. He writes songs, and and he's been playing as Tommy Cooper. They invited me up. To, they were up at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival with this show called Lennon Through a Glass Onion, which had been to Off Broadway. If you do it, would you open in Liverpool, which is where I live, is where you know. Um, would you open there five days after you finish with Down the Dock Road? Now, bearing in mind we've got all these Tommy Cooper shows yeah. every Sunday. You don't want Tommy Cooper creeping into John Lennon, trust me. <laughs> you know, you go from there and... <laughs> Sally, we're there. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, you know. <laughs> so it was almost like rap, but I was doing those Sundays. I was still doing Sunday shows with Tommy Cooper. Uh, they're a really nice crowd, uh, which is good. The pace is good tonight, uh, which is it's it's a key to this show. <laughs> What's it like? You needed some more parts. Six parts, nine changes because I changed back between characters a couple of times, and it all sort of happened tonight. We had a few technical little th things that need to be uh, have a little work on, but it's always this what this is. It's live theatre, so we. We'll, uh, we'll attend to those tomorrow. Who <laughs> was passing the props? Uh, you? Uh, that was me. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do the props. <laughs> so I do the quick changes for Sharon as well. Take me to your heart again. Can I start again, please? Just do it. That's the worst thing. Don't act. I don't think. I'm trying. It's the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> it's priceless, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? And then I'll be going off to the States, New York, to do John Lennon. I've got the nose, you know. Obviously, I'll be auditioning for things and writing songs and trying to be a good father and a good, and a good partner. Yeah, to that'd this be one. nice. To that this was one. very good time, wasn't it? <laughs> Perfect. She just, have I you just noticed? Sneak. She actually, she's the gagger. <laughs> ah. <laughs>